final feature we're going to demonstrate within graphing is how to add a trend line. Well, first of all, what is a trend line and why do we want to add one? A trend line is an indication of the overall pattern in your data. Is your data growing or decreasing? To add a trend line to my data, I'm going to right click on the series that I want to add a trend line to. And from here, I will see the option to add trend line. From here, the default trend line that is applied by Excel is the linear trend line. A linear trend line basically means it will be a straight line through the middle of your data. It is what we call the line of best fit. It is the line, the single straight line, that best matches the individual points within this chart. And this line serves to show us what is the overall trend in our data. Here we can see there's an overall trend of growth. Although we have some ups and downs, overall our website click-through rate is going up. There are many other options within our trend lines. We can use, for example, logarithmic or polynomial. These options should be used if you have a firm understanding of the mathematical implications. For most business applications, you'll probably simply want the linear trend line or the moving average. Let's examine quickly the polynomial trend line. The polynomial trend line will give us a curve that best fits the data points we have. Again, we can change the order of the polynomial trend line. But again, unless you have a firm understanding of the mathematical implication, I wouldn't adjust these settings. To examine the moving average trend line, I'm going to look at a different data set. Here we have total sales again, expressed over time. Sometimes a linear trend line can be useful in this situation. But mostly we want to just see a smooth trend line that broadly reflects the major trends in the data. So let's again right click on our data series, go to add trend line, and this time we're going to select moving average. Also notice that within my moving average I have two periods. What this means is for each of the moving average points, Excel is taking the average of the two prior periods. I can change that up to three to gain a smoother line. So for each point in our moving average, it is the average of the previous three points. So for example, to arrive at this value, Excel has calculated the average of the three previous. To calculate this point, Excel has looked at the average of the three previous points, effectively giving us a much smoother line across our data points, but one that isn't constrained by mathematical rules. A period of three is the most commonly used moving average, but depending on your data and depending on how much variation you're seeing within your pattern, you may want to change the period to a higher number. Returning lastly to the linear trend line, it is also useful to understand that we can add the equation for a linear trend line. By checking this tick box, I can add an equation to the chart. This can be very useful for when we need to predict future values. For example, if somebody wanted me to give an estimate of where our sales would be in June next year, I could perhaps use my imagination and draw a mental line to find out where my sales would be at, or I can take this equation, substitute my y's and x's for a numerical value for the month, and my y will give me the total sales at some future point. Or I can substitute my x values for a future month, and this equation will give me a future prediction of where this trend line would take me six months from now. This covers the most important features within trend lines.